Hi, my name is Jamie Lynch, and you are listening to Eating Habits, my podcast about everything restaurants. I will explore the human element of the hospitality business, and I'll talk to the who's who in restaurants, explore their stories, and hear what's on their minds in the ever-changing landscape of the food and beverage industry. I'm Hannah Schneider. I'm a hospitality publicist and owner of Brand House, and you're listening to Eating Habits. Great job. <laughs> Is that my intro? That was awesome. Am I hired? Yeah, you're cool. hired. Cool. You did great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. <laughs> okay, so you are a publicist, marketing guru. Obviously, you have your own company, yes. Brand House, yeah. here in Nashville, and you represent hospitality businesses, restaurants, hotels. Yeah. You how nailed did you, it. How did you get into <laughs> that gig? Loved working in restaurants my whole life. Like, it was my calling. I've always worked in hospitality just to pay bills. So you're a restaurant kid, restaurant kid Uh, through and through like front of house, back of house, did it all. Cool. I think I started hostessing when I was like 14 and my parents made me get a job and I loved it. Like I knew I feel very lucky. Like I always knew this was it. I didn't have to like try a bunch of things. Like I loved it. I was obsessed. Couldn't, couldn't take me out. Awesome. But I didn't want to be, and this, there's nothing wrong with this, I didn't want to be 45 with kids and working till 2 or 3 a.m. Like, I knew that wasn't my plan. Uh-huh. I like to go to bed early, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is rare for hospitality yep. people. Um, and I got that all out in my 20s, but I sort of fell into this. I was, like, hostessing for a very fine dining steakhouse in San Diego, and Instagram had launched, and okay. I... We'll never forget, I Amazoned a social media for dummies book, and I begged my boss to, like, let me start an Instagram for them. Um, and they were my first client at no 18. Way. Yeah, I think I charged them $200 a month. <laughs> um, and I didn't know what I was doing yeah. at all. But nobody else did either. No. Right? They're like, it was brand new. No one no one knew yeah. anything. Did you, did you have any sort of like instinct at that time that this thing would blow up? Or were you just kind of like, this is super cool technology. Like, I, I want to do it. Yeah. I mean, I loved taking photos of food before... <laughs> there were influencers and food porn existed Mm -hmm. like that wasn't a thing were you doing it like on a polaroid yeah (laughs) like i think my like sk3 or like my flip phone or something they were i had to go through and archive so much content actually last year of like the horrendous photos that i thought were gorgeous because they were back then they were and they 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 were were like like, very filtered and grainy and no i had no clue it just it was something i saw other people doing and I just was like, well, we should do it, obviously, you know, and it wasn't my role at all. But I had to beg them to let me start an Instagram. I had to like I did a whole little shitty presentation <laughs> and they finally were like, oh, you're not going to stop. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, no, no I'm going to do it. And they were like, OK, cool. Yeah. And I worked with them for five or six years, actually, like past my hostessing days with yeah. them. So that's sort of how I fell into it. They that steakhouse had a PR firm. And I remember so vividly, like 18 years old, and their PR people would walk in, and I thought they were so smart and so cool. Um, and so I ended up trying to intern for them. And that's really, I hated school, like couldn't pay me a million dollars to go back. And so I just started interning with hospitality agencies to learn like what PR was. Yeah. Because no, I don't think my parents know what I do <laughs> yeah. to this day. I don't know what you yeah. guys do. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Like, we have all these people. I don't know what how, how it works, but it works. It does. I mean, yeah. So I basically interned for several years and worked in restaurants at night until someone would hire me. Mm-hmm. I think I got my first like paid agency job when I was 21. And I had interned for free for three years prior to that. Gotcha. Yeah. What were you doing as an intern for a PR firm? <laughs> like, so are you like reaching Depends out? Depends where to- I was working. Uh, yeah. One, I was getting coffee and was like their printing girl. Yeah. I don't know if we can say bad words. Oh uh, yeah. A hundred percent. I was their printing bitch. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and and others I learned so much. Things like I still talk to two of my bosses from back then in San Diego. Mm-hmm. And there are still things I learned at that internship that I carry through in my business today. Nice. And so What I'm, are they? Can you share them? Yeah, like different tools that we use, which would probably sound like gibberish to you, but we use something called Cision, which is like a database of media okay. and how to just like organize things. And I think the rest of what I learned was actually working in restaurants. It's like yeah. 
there's great marketing people, but there's not great restaurant people that mm -hmm. also do marketing. And yep. so like speaking the language of chefs and I think the difference here is like, I'm restaurant first and then marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding the challenges that restaurant owners and chefs and staff face is really, really important to be able to tell their story properly or to totally. support them properly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did that. I think I bartended till I was like 26 and I was still, you know, working. Yeah, still I would do working that at night, like, yeah. pays the bills and then, you know, doing this stuff during the day. Did you have like a, like a, uh, like a PR mentor? Yeah. Somebody who like, cause we were, we were totally. talking before we started about yeah. Andrew Carmelini and yeah. you represent W mm -hmm. hotel here. Mm -hmm. Andrew has two restaurants in the W. Yeah. He was my mentor. So yeah. we kind of got on that. I was thinking, well, what, what did that look like for yeah. you? So what um, was your... I would say two. Okay. Um, one was the Amy Ogden, who was the publicist that walked in when I was 18 years old. Still talk to her weekly. Mm -hmm. And the second was my first boss that hired me at Chemistry PR, which was a hospitality agency in San Diego. And she was the first, I would say, person that, like, without a college degree, actually gave me a paid shot like hired me yeah. onto her team yeah i still talk to them and always. they were like nurturing of you and like showed you the ropes or, or did they kind of like did I, they throw you in the deep end i think yeah i think opposite i okay. think like they probably quickly realized i learned by doing and so i think less than like nurturing they were more like this is how you do it now go do it and if yeah. you if you fuck it up we're gonna tell yeah. you why yeah and for me that's exactly what i needed and i doubt that either of them know like how impactful they have been mm -hmm. i try to tell them they're like shut up hannah yeah but like truly to this day and that was 12 years 13 years ago i still am so grateful for that time i don't think mentors like to hear <laughs> like you know what i mean i think yeah. mentorship is like one of those things that i think they you do it because I, I mentor a bunch of people now mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and and i didn't for a long time yeah. but now i have chefs that work under me that i'm like mentoring and you know, I don't like to be fluffed yeah, yeah. by my team. Oh, God. Like I do, I'm doing so it so awkward. For, yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. I'm sharing with you knowledge so that you can do a yeah. better job and, and see where that lineage goes. Right. For and sure. I think with mentors, I think it's a lot about that, right? It's about carrying on and what happens next mm -hmm. and, and preserving the work that you do or the knowledge that you have. Yeah. Right. Rather than like, you know, I'm so great. Or like, mentoring without even, I don't think they realized they were mentoring me, mm, right? Like, yeah. I think for me now, people have said that. They're proficient. Yeah, they're, they're like, like, just be better at your job. Yeah. But I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. like, you mean everything. But yeah. yeah, I think a lot of times too, like, you end up mentoring people that you work with when you see talent and you can recognize hard workers that have, like, great ethics and, and actually want to put their head down and grind and, like, figure it out. Right. I think... I think a good leader sees that and, and puts time and energy into them, maybe even without being con like conscious of that. Yeah. I think I do that with my team today. Like there's people that show up and they get their paycheck and yeah. they do their job yeah, and there's check people in, that, check out, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, right. and like, God bless <laughs> yeah, them. What yeah. can I do? You like those two. Yeah. They have bills. Off. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. But like, and then there's people that ask questions and that are hungry and, and those are people I spend more time with. I think that's true everywhere. Absolutely. Right. In it's any like, industry. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes both kinds. Yeah. Right. And I think a good leader can identify that. For right? sure. It's like, you're like, okay, I definitely don't put as much time and energy into the people that just check in. Yeah. You know, Why like, would you? Yeah, it's your I'm time. Like, yeah. I've got stuff to do. <laughs> My time's valuable. Like, exactly. Let's go. Exactly. Um, but the people that do those like, and being able to identify them is key. Yeah. Yeah. For cool. sure. So as you were, as you were talking about that, I was thinking to myself, like, what is it? You're a restaurant kid. So mm -hmm. you came up through restaurants. You understand the language. We'll talk about some of those experiences because <laughs> you were joking around before we started, and I liked it. I miss them. Yeah. I'm like, like you, if you, you guys are understaffed, throw me in. Like, I miss Careful it. What you ask Hostessing for. is the best job. Everyone should do it. Why? Oh my god! You, you get to mind? talk to people. <laughs> you get to like. There's like a little bit of a Tetris game at 7:30 when all your covers are taking long. Like, I loved the like chaos of mm -hmm. it. And you like talking to people, obviously. Yeah. Because I don't. <laughs> You're like, it's not, so much fun. You get to talk to everyone. Until 6 like, oh, p.m. Gross. And then I'm like, please don't look at me. Don't <laughs> yeah. speak to me. Um, but yeah, I loved it. I yeah. got to meet people I never would have met. And I think I took advantage of that. Not in like a creepy way. But like right. I met some of the 
most elite people in in you San Diego where I grew and... up and I and I made a point to make sure they knew who I was as well at the time I was That's just smart. like seating them at their favorite table but I remembered what table they wanted and I knew what wine they liked and I knew it was their wife's birthday and that went far to people yeah and you start getting you get palmed a bunch of money yeah. when Hell you know yeah. people stop little side tips so so <laughs> I do not think that hostessing is the best job or the funnest job <laughs> at all. But I will agree that it's it's a super important job. Yeah. I think it's very underrated. Absolutely. Um, like I mean we take we take a lot of young um, young people into our kind of hostessing mm-hmm. j- position. Um, most of them are young ladies. Yeah. And we make them into um, maitre d's. Yeah, absolutely. Which is like a glorified host or yeah. hostess, but the because of the value of that job, it's the first face that you see when yes. you walk into. It's the first personality. It's the first they dose. They set the tone. They answer the phone. They're the first people that people talk to. And so they represent your brand or yeah. your restaurant or your whatever uh, before you even get a chance to, to connect with the guest. Absolutely. Um, so it's so valuable to have a key player in there. Yeah. It sounds like you were good at it. Thank you. <laughs> and I got to work probably with the best host in the universe at Le Cirque 2000. And you remember that. Uh, oh, Sirio Maccioni. <laughs> Do you know? How could you forget? <laughs> yeah, he is the best. He was I need the to best. to meet this man. Yeah, so I got to work for Sirio <laughs> as, as, an, um, as an intern at Le Cirque, and I was working, Andrew was a sous chef, that's how I met mm-hmm. him, and um, Sirio was the owner, obviously, yep. of Le Cirque and the maitre d'. He started as a maitre d' in New York, I think it was it in New York. I don't know. You can watch. You can watch his. There's a documentary yeah, about him. Yeah, yeah, He's like amazing. But um, you know, he was probably in his in his late seventies, maybe in his mid seventies when I worked for him. And he would come down the line every night. He would come into the kitchen and, and greet the chefs and say hello to everybody. And then he would make his way through the line mm-hmm. and you know say hi to all the cooks and peel some stuff off your station. I remember for my state, I was the entremet. I did all the veg. Mm-hmm. It was always the raw artichokes. He would grab like these chunks of raw artichokes because we cooked them a la menu. We cooked them to order. Okay. And he would eat the raw artichoke. And if everybody's <laughs> eating a raw artichoke, they're like bitter oh, and yeah. nasty. Oh, yeah. That's horrible. And he would just crunch on them and be like, in his thick Italian accent, just be like, oh, thank you, chef. And then like move on. I was like, I'm not a chef. I was like, I don't know anything. I was like, your chef calls me the dog. Like that was literally, Sota Kuhn would yell at me and say, you are the dog. Oh, my God. You go back there, dog, in your cage. Like that kind of stuff. I was like, wow, all right. Can't say that now. No. <laughs> and so I was talking with another chef. I was talking with Brian Baxter about that mm-hmm, yesterday. We were mm-hmm. talking about how things have changed. Yeah. Right? And um, I took so much abuse as a young cook. I'm sorry to laugh at you. <laughs> but, I, but I excelled in that environment. <laughs> totally. Like I was totally down with it because I respected the chefs. I loved what, like they yeah. knew everything. And so I was like, yeah, give it to me. Like mm-hmm. make me angry. I cook mm-hmm. harder that way. Um, and nowadays, like, you know, you get. Yeah, that's yeah, a big no. Yeah, the lawyers show up and they're like, hey. Yeah, it's definitely, I would say, shifted how we work on the outside mm-hmm. and, and how inside of restaurants are changing. And I think, of course, a lot of that change is positive, but. Totally, it's totally positive. I miss some of the grit and yeah. some of the, like, not having to be so PC. Like, mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I do. Are, I loved it. I think those days are over. You know, it's like, I don't want to hurt anybody or, but I think that joking, like you just have to be so cautious now of what you say. And and again, for the most part, that is all like, that's how it should be. People should yeah. be respected. But, you know, I think that joking and that like firing up of people, like that's, <laughs> that's sort of gone, yeah. you know? Yeah, it is. I mean, it still gets that way a little bit. Um, <laughs> Behind you the just closed have to be doors. careful about the words you use. Exactly, you can still exactly. Get, you can get elevated. You can get excited. <laughs> Make fun of me smarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just have to pick my words better. Yeah, yeah. And, and, fair uh, enough. Yeah. And, and I've, I was always, like, I was one of those cooks because that's how I learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I learned from those guys. Yeah, of course. And um, so I was somebody who would get elevated and get rowdy in the kitchen and mm-hmm, get loud. Mm-hmm. And I would scream and yell and curse. Yeah. But I was never like degrading. You know, Absolutely. like I never told somebody they were a piece of shit yeah. or, you know, you fucking suck or anything like that. Yeah. It was more like, 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 what the fuck is going on here? Like, why can't we get right. our shit together? Yeah. What's, like, you know, that kind of thing. For like, sure. Rather than like attacking people. Yeah, of course. And so that I, I feel like if I had attacked people more, I would probably have, you know, some baggage that <laughs> yeah. I was carrying. Yeah. But I feel, I feel okay <laughs> about. Kept it to a minimal. Yeah, yeah. I kept that stuff to a minimal. I um, get it. 
Did you work for chefs like that? Um, or in restaurants that were elevated like that? I would say yes, but never in a back of house position. So I think when I was working more closely with the kitchens, the it was typically, right well, it was typically management or, okay. or owner. Okay. So I, I owned a restaurant in Nashville. That's what I co-owned it. That's what brought me here initially from New York city. And so I ended up spending more time in the back than yeah. I actually assumed I would in the front, which uh -huh. is what I loved. Right. But I learned to love that as well. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't nev like on the line cooking. You don't yeah. want me cooking your food, <laughs> I promise. But so yeah, I would say I've seen it, but it's like I'm grabbing plates and I just hear them yelling yeah. that their steak is overcooked. Right. I'm not the one getting, you know, the, the brunt of it. <laughs> yeah. um, unless I like massively messed up an order. And at that point I'm just cussing at myself. So right. you know, I beat them to it. What is it like having, so I'm curious about you're kind of the middleman, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're representing chefs, restaurants, yeah. um, hotels, and you're representing them to the public. Yeah. And we have all this change happening. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, a grit, we'll say, that yeah. happens. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been subjected to some of it ourselves. Yeah. And what is that like for you having to play that middle? Mm -hmm. And what's your approach to that? Right. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we're your clients yeah. or the restaurant chef people are your clients. But, you know, what we're really out to do, I mean, and I want to preface this by saying that every hospitality business is out there to take care of people. Uh, absolutely. Like, that's the I only think the public goal. forgets that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, hey, we're not, we're not just here to like get, like nobody's getting rich. <laughs> In restaurants. Correct. Right? Like, that's not something that, like... Let's put that on the record. Yeah, like, that's not why You don't open do a restaurant to make a lot of money. Nope. You're just kind of psychotic. Yeah. yeah. And if you're lucky... Yeah. Some people you get make by. a lot of money. Yeah, of course. So, like, some people do. Yeah. But not everybody does. Right. And most people don't. Yeah. They're in it for something else, and it's usually to take care of people. Yeah, So, of just course. remember that when they fuck up. <laughs> Be kind. <laughs> yeah. Um So, but what's that like Yeah, for it's an interesting... I would say, of course, over the last two to three years has been a huge shift in my business and how we approach our strategies. So to break it down, basically a publicist is responsible for representing you guys to the public. So we work with media or influencers, any magazines, online stories, TV that you see typically about a restaurant or a chef or a hotel, someone has put together and that is us. So we communicate with the, the writers and the editors, um, mostly positive and sometimes really, really tough stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we're the people that get calls if one of my bartenders acted inappropriately to a customer or another employee, and we are making those suggestions of how to handle that publicly. We also run social media for most of our clients, and it's been a really interesting change in the sense that, like, Six years ago, you went to a restaurant because you wanted the food or you liked the vibe. Mm -hmm. That's it. You wanted a good meal. Have yep. fun. Get drunk. Now, there's been this like pressure, I feel like, because of social media and because of how we're all getting Connected. our content, yeah, you know, and getting our news and our information. I recently owned a coffee shop. I just sold it at the beginning of the year. And I, it was in East Nashville, which is like a very kind of hip, liberal, like funky part of town, which inside of Tennessee. But I felt so much pressure to post about like political happenings or um, stand up for certain rights for certain people. And that was really tough for me because as a person, not a business owner, I am all about inclusivity and, you know, vote a certain way. And I'm, I'm all about that posting on my personal page. Fine. But in my business, I want people to come because they like what I'm serving and because my staff is kind to you. And I really struggled with like, damned if I do, damned if I don't. Because if I do post it, I'm going to piss someone else off. And those people, while I might not agree with them, they're allowed to have a different belief system than I do. Mm -hmm. And I still need to pay my baristas. So I still need that customer. And I really, really went through a period where I'm going to post, you know, this on my Instagram because everyone else is doing it. Mm -hmm. And I sort of started to like stray away from, I've always been good at like my personal opinions have nothing to do with my business. Right. They have nothing to do with my client's business. What you do outside of nine to five, 
I don't give a shit who you golf with. I don't care what you're voting. Right. Like, be kind to people, be inclusive. That's what hospitality is for. And so I started to opt out of kind of just chiming in to chime in. Mm-hmm. And then I got shit on for that too, because yeah. then I'm against it if I'm not posting for it. And I uh-huh. really struggled with that for myself personally. And so I realized like, we really have to be an advocate for our clients and you didn't have to talk about politics as a restaurant right? many years ago. And, and I've noticed a trend in that. And I think like people should always run their business, what feels true to them. And the truth always Mm-hmm. you know, reveals itself. And I've had, I've had some clients that go all in and they, <laughs> they post, you know, some crazy shit and, yeah. and they, but you have to stick with it. That's fine. Like stick with it. That that's going to be, become part of your brand. Yep. And I have some that they run their business and what's happening outside of those four walls, they don't bring into that conversation. And mm-hmm. so, and there was a lot of conversations that we had over the last two years of like, well, should I be posting this? Should I not? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, and, and so we're the people, the sounding boards to make those suggestions. And that was tough, right? I'm not a politician. I don't know. Right. And, and so we have had to really tread lightly on how we are. I have clients that I completely disagree with on my personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. They don't know that it's not my spot. They don't give a shit. Right. I don't care. And so I think people have, it's been hard for people to separate the two and like there's not there's it's not wrong or right either way but that has been like a holy shit for me yeah you know i think i think you know being a chef and now restaurateur and being a chef before the age of you know social media yeah like this shit didn't like it was new york times yeah when i when i was a chef it was about the food yeah it was like let's do it like we gotta get a good review in the new york times yeah great um, James Beard Award, like if you get nominated, that's yes. amazing. Yes. If you like, if, if food and wine calls, that's You're awesome. In. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we didn't have all this, all this stuff. Yeah. And it just adds a complexity to what you're already trying to do. And it's become, and it's evolving. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we recognize, and I think most, most people in the industry recognize the importance of social media. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially Instagram. Yeah. I think for me, Instagram, I, I like Instagram mm-hmm. cause I like pictures Yeah, and I don't have to communicate with people. I don't have to engage. Totally. I can just like, Oh, that's a cool picture. I yeah. can like it. I can not. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, Facebook, I could give two shits about. I yeah. just think people are fucking out there. Like just <laughs> bitching like a bunch of children on it. Um, Fair. attack me if you want. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like go it's for fine. it. Yeah. Fine. Whatever. But, but I think, I think, you know, Facebook's a different type of, yeah. of conversation. For sure. I think TikTok's great. It's super fun yeah. and, and can be interesting. What do you think about, and, and we're cognizant of that, yeah, right? And yeah. I'm cognizant of that as yeah. a chef and my own like kind of personal brand on top of the totally, restaurants. Totally. And you and, guys have, from my experience working with you, like you've never, at least in Nashville, brought that into the story. And for yeah. me, that's like so, such a relief. Yeah. It's just one less thing. Like we can focus on all the positive instead of having to spend hours talking about like, where do we personally stand on this? And I just don't necessarily see a fit. It just doesn't need to be. I don't know. I just, I I, struggle with that a lot. So there's two sides of it, right? Like one side is that, you know, as restaurant owners, as restaurateurs and chefs, we have a platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you use that platform for to push your personal beliefs Beliefs, right? or because the restaurant business is personal. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, you know, business isn't personal, it's business. But the restaurant business and hospitality is very personal. We're taking care of people. Yeah. And so, you know, is it appropriate to do that? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we typically don't because we want our places to be inclusive for everybody. Now, if people are fucking assholes, we have no issues throwing Absolutely. them out and going after them. Of course. Like, you know what I mean? Get out of here. And I think yeah. it's like, run your business that way. Right. It doesn't need to be what you're posting about. To right. me, I would hire anyone in any sort of community in my business. It doesn't mean I'm going to post like, you know, looking for this type of employee. I'm not, but yeah. I am a welcoming employer. Right. And I hope that they know that. And I think how I live my life day to day should show that, but I don't want to post that just to be part of a conversation because I feel pressured to, Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. hundred percent on my personal page, totally different than my brand house page. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a weird thing. Yeah, it is. I want to, I wonder what your view is on this. So like, (laughs) uh, so my, 
I, I, I am almost purely positive yeah. on all of my social media stuff because yeah. the world that we live in is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. It's <laughs> a scary place. It's scary out there. Yeah. And, and people are weaponizing their social medias or their ghost medias and mm -hmm. all this stuff, which I didn't even realize it kind of existed until a little while ago. People were like, oh yeah, it's not even a real person. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> What do you mean? And they're like, oh, no, no, that's like a, that's fake. like a ghost of yeah. fake out. They're just yeah. using that. To, I was like, well, fuck that. Like, that's <laughs> bullshit. Um, so it's like, you know, so there's all these layers to it mm -hmm. and there's people using it in that way. And I get it. Yeah. Um, because it has attention. People want to use it that way. Right. So, so for me, you know, I just try to be positive because like, Great. I think there's enough negativity. Yeah. Right? Like you, you could turn on the news and watch hours and hours of endless right. shit. If that's what you're into and go for it. Yeah. But for me, like. I like feeling good and yeah. not like not like shit yeah. and not hateful and scared and all this other exactly. things. So, so that's kind of my approach. Exactly. What do you see from people? Obviously, you have to pay attention to it. Yeah. You got to pay attention to your clients. Yeah. Social media, probably what the trends are and stuff. Do you see that happening? And then is it changing? And mm -hmm. is there something we can do to combat it? Should we? Are we just kind of stuck in this? <sighs> yeah, I, I think... It's such a complex answer. Like every brand has a different mission and has different pillars. I have a client here who I adore, but she, she posts some crazy, she'll post these like horrible reviews on her, on her business Instagram account. <laughs> and she just like gives it to them. She doesn't care. She's like, don't come back here then. Da, 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 da. And you know what? People are like, go girl like yeah. they're supporting yeah, her yeah. and that's now her part of her brand okay, like so that would scare the, the shit out of me but yeah. it's kind of I mean the reviews are ridiculous mm -hmm. and <laughs> and they're against a lot of them were this example was about drag brunch okay in Nashville and okay. you know she got reviews about like I'll never come back there because it's against my religion okay and she's like Okay. Yeah. Don't come back. Why uh -huh. are you posting that? So she'll post it with a don't come back then. Yeah. And it's funny and it's worked to her benefit, but that's a very dangerous thing to do. It is. But, and again, it's like you go all in, you got to choose where you stand. She's not um, wrong though. She could have ignored it, you yeah. know? And so, but I'm getting those calls of like, did you see this post? I'm like, yeah, I saw it. Here we go. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, I'm prepared. And then my team is like the... standing by their computers ready to, we have to engage then with the entire conversation. And so I think for me, it's, it always comes back to understanding our clients on so many levels. Mm -hmm. And then our job is to support them, right. whatever that means. It's not my job to say, well, I disagree with you yeah. uh, because of this. It's, Will this damage your brand mm -hmm. or your business? That's all I care about. And yeah. that's where we step in and we handle crisis or we support them, back them up. We, yep. you know, I've, I've had, you know, weird stories come up about chefs or people we work with. And then we get the question of like, well, how could you work with them? I'm like, that's one story. Yeah. And I personally have actually let go of clients when, I just disagree on a personal level about how they treat their people and how yeah. they run their business. And, you know, I have some like things that I just won't tolerate if you disrespect my staff or your staff in yep. certain ways. And I've had to let go. And that's money that pays my pays my family's bills and pays my employees yep. payroll. And that's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the people that we stick by are people that we know. It, it's like that that relationship is so important because through some of the turmoil we can confidently say we represent them and we will continue to do so because we know them as people mm -hmm. and so yeah there's just been a lot more of that than like yeah. i just used to send margarita recipes to magazines and <laughs> okay. that was really now nice it's, yeah. you now know? it's a lot more yeah uh, and now it's layered like, uh, exactly and i don't take that lightly like this is people's livelihoods <laughs> on the line like if you're accusing someone of assault or I had a client that was accused of drugging someone like that's not a small thing. No, that's like and a big deal. We get to deal with all of that. Yeah. And so our jobs and our landscape has changed quite a bit because of social media and just because of how quickly people can get information. If that happened, if I, and I'm glad, by the way, most of the time it's someone has done something wrong and they should be called mm -hmm. accountable. Yep. But few years ago it would be like it would take weeks to hit the newsstand we would have meetings we would be able to meet and it's like someone tweeted this and now 
everything has hit the fan. Yeah, um, it's happening like instantly. It is, and so our job is on call at all hours, all the time, mm-hmm. and that is what like we sign up for. Yeah, um, I tell people all the time that applied to Brand House, I'm like, I know you think it's really cool, and we like get to eat and drink really yeah. fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it is. Yeah. But, but your phone needs to be at you, like at all sides. It's really yeah. hard to like separate that because we do have to be available. Like yeah. we are the first people that get reached out to if some shit hits the fan. Right. And that's, you know, I'm like, whoa, I did not sign up yeah, for yeah, that. Like, oh, shit. I've learned how to, I think, deal with it through yeah. my career, mm-hmm. you know, the last 12 years. But yeah, that has been a massive shift for us. I'm wondering how much... And this may vary, but like, is there, do you have any sort of grasp on like what, when, when you're, when you're dealing with social media and stuff mm-hmm. and there's stories breaking on social media, mm-hmm. right? Everybody's a critic. Everybody's yeah. like, you know, got an agenda or whatever. Yeah. How much of that stuff is like legit issues and things that you have mm-hmm. to crisis manage mm-hmm. and how much of it is just fabricated bullshit that like somebody's on a, on a mission yeah. to like hurt somebody or, or make somebody look bad. I'd say typically they're not huge things. Like what we're seeing is like my food was cold, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, like, yeah. thank God. That's oh, a good yeah. day. I get that. All I can the deal time. with that. And we <laughs> respond to those things, but it, I would say it's very rare. And again, I think I feel very lucky in my career. Now I get to choose who I work with. Mm-hmm. I don't have to sign someone up if I think they're going to be an asshole or I think they're going to be a shitty client. Yeah. I, that's a luxury and I realize that and I've worked really hard to get there. So I feel like we like get rid of those before, but yeah, I'd say if something big does come up in my case, um, there has typically been legs to it and mm-hmm. it's, it's usually about staff. Like you yeah. can't control what's really hard is if you employ somebody, you can't control what they do when they leave your doors. Yep. And that's a very, again, a really weird gray line of like, I've had to tell some of my employees to please make their pages private because they post certain things that my clients have seen and were offended by. Oh uh, yeah. I can't actually really tell them what to post on their personal stuff. But right. so there's just so much gray area mm-hmm. now. But in the case that they're like big events, typically it has been an employee and then we have to work with our client to figure out like what's the best plan of action Mm -hmm. do we address it to the press at all right do we make a statement how do we handle that internally and what is that messaging so we would come up with all of that make suggestions and and hope for the best you know (laughs) and typically (laughs) truly but it's and and typically it's letting go of that employee and that's that's their statement that's enough it's like we don't stand by this behavior right and hope you know move on what's your vetting process for for (laughs) For clients yeah I can know in like 10 seconds if I like somebody or not. What do you look for? Like when you, when you, and and do you shop clients? Like, are you looking for new clients? Do you, are you like, you know what? I really want to work with a brand like you, or I want to get in with somebody like you, or is it more like wait for people to come to you? (laughs) In my head. Yeah. In my head, I'm, there's absolutely brands I'd love to work with. Um, My business has really been built on referrals and recommendations. I look for people that, are just genuine about what they're doing. Like I, if it's clear to me, someone is just trying to make cash, probably not a right fit for me. Like you don't work in PR to make a lot of money (laughs) or social media. You know, (laughs) I think my first salary job was like $25,000 and like, that was good money. I think I was paying myself that when we opened. Yeah. You know, it is like Like, like what you said with restaurants, like some do really well and they work to make that and like, great. But I think it's for me now. And this sounds so cheesy, but I'm a, I'm a new mom and I feel like it has softened me (laughs) so much. I'm like so nice and patient with my employees now, (laughs) almost too nice. Um, but I just want kind people like my entire, like if you had to ask me what I care about, it's like, don't be shitty to people. I sometimes have to give hard feedback and I sometimes have to have difficult conversations. Like you said, I'm not attacking the person. I might have to have, you know, a certain tone, but it's like, don't be shitty to people. Mm -hmm. It's so simple and it goes so far. That's what I look for. Like, I just want someone that's genuine, excited about what they're doing and respects and values what we do and what we bring to the table. What types of stuff 
things because mm-hmm. because I'm with you, right? Yeah. And I think like we have like Fist Street Group, we have missions. Mm-hmm. Like we are always on a mission. Yeah. And it changes. We really are. It, yeah, and it, <laughs> and, it, and it changes and it evolves over time. Yeah. You know, I think when we started, we were just like, you know, we wanted to promote hospitality in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Charlotte was was kind of void of any yeah. sort of personality. Like everything was totally. very just like, you know, and and we thought we had something to say, and we we. And we were fucking loud about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, you weren't quiet. And, yeah, and so <laughs> you know, and and so that was our story then, right? And then now, that you know, we didn't know if that restaurant was going to be around in three years or yeah. not. We, we we believed that it would be, and I think honestly that's why we made it because you know we weren't. You hope we were, it will. Yeah, and so we did, and I and I think as we kind of evolved as a group, obviously our missions changed. Yeah. Right. What kind of things that people are like what kind of missions that they're on or things they stand by get you excited about the hospitality game i think just a good product and like again just that core like love for taking care of people Mm -hmm. like i i don't go out to eat for the food personally i go out for the experience and for me it's like a refuge like sitting alone at a bar ordering a martini is like my silence it's my like (laughs) unwinding and I I don't know I think there's been a lot of people that that think this is easy and they come up trying to do like very trendy like (laughs) concepts Mm -hmm. and I think I look for partners that will be with us for years to come Mm -hmm. I want to grow and I want to be the reason my clients are growing yeah and so those sort of concepts are are tough for me because I think they'll be fun for a year. Yep. That's a very easy job. They're called trends for a reason. <laughs> you know, like yeah. opening a restaurant on the PR side, like it's new. Everyone's going to talk about it. Right. What's hard and I think what speaks to what we do or if you're a, you know, a good publicist is that after the first three months, people are still talking mm-hmm. about you. And that is, that's hard. Yeah. That's a lot harder. So I yeah. think brands that have a mission to like be in it for the long haul and that have like growth ideas yeah. or you know want to scale their business because that's what I want to do um and so it's just aligning you know making sure both companies are in the right direction yeah that's kind of a boring answer but no, it makes sense like so, I don't want to yeah. do no offense like I like going but I don't want to do like a all pink matcha restaurant Right. That doesn't like get yeah. me going at night. That's not like right. turning my wheels. <laughs> yeah. It's just not. And that might be a personal thing, but like I get to choose that. Right. And there will be some girls that really like that. Yeah. I like, I think it's because of my background and my like true love for hospitality. Yeah. That like that doesn't necessarily get me going. Right. Well then, you know. <laughs> that's going to offend somebody. But that, that's all right. Like It's just the truth. Yeah. And don't be offended. I want to be like your everybody... publicist for 10 years, not right. for eight months. Right, right. Oh. Until black is the new yeah, pink. Like, and then it's like, well, now you got to change. You got to Then I'm fired. Yeah, like, because yeah. you can't afford me anymore. Right, so right. for me, I've, I've turned down a lot of projects. Mm-hmm. It's not how I like to do business. And so, and it, it's for that reason. It's yeah. like, I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah. I'm not like a six month person. Right. Cool. Well, I think we should talk about Nashville okay. a little bit because yes. this is like hot potatoes. It is hot potatoes. In Nashville. And I want to know your favorite restaurant here. Oh, that's right. You asked Not me yours, that. but yeah. like where I know Not when you restaurant. come to town, you try to, I'm sure you try to make time to go out. Like I, I what do. are you loving here? Yeah. What am I loving here? Well, I mean, you know, I ha- like I got to say Andrew's places, right? <laughs> yeah, like, of course. Because he's like my mentor. They're so. great. So Carne Mare and The Dutch, yeah. obviously, um, are some of my favorites because Andrew's the shit. Yeah. And I, and I just, I love him. And I think he just, he does such amazing work. Yeah. Consistently. And you know what you're getting. You know you what you're getting. Yeah. And, and, you know, we aspire to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of like what's frustrating for me and, and hard for me and what I'm doing is like, it's not easy. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? And and the fact that they're able to do it in different markets and stuff like that is just fascinating to me and I'm just I'm still amazed by it. Mm-hmm. So so definitely those spots if people have not been, you yeah. have to go. I just went um, for the first time as like a guest cuz we work to, with the property. Did you go to the Dutch or I Carnivore? did um or both. Which one has the mozzarella stick with caviar? Carnemari. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, sat at the bar and had that. I was like, yeah, damn. Yeah, it's like grown up 
mozzarella, mozzarella sticks. sticks. Like yeah. I was like, of so course. Good. Why weren't? Why is no one doing this? It yeah. was so good. And then that that's that that stupid chocolate cake. That have you had that? Oh, it's like a twenty. I leg. haven't. It's ridiculous. Oh god, it's amazing. I couldn't walk already. So it's like, stupid in a good way. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of so course. I saw it on the thing, and I was like, I'm gonna go get that. I'm gonna have it. <laughs> so I ordered it. Patrick was like, I don't want dessert. He's like, I'll just drink coffee or whatever. And I was like, I'm ordering this thing. And it comes out and it's like, it's literally, I don't know, 10 inches tall. And there's like 15 layers yes. of like different cho- I don't even know how they do it. It's like, Sounds amazing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to add that to my list. Add it to your list. Try that. Some champagne and chocolate cake. Um, <laughs> ooh, there you go. Yeah. I like it. Always. Um, so that, I would recommend them. I'm trying to think of where else. So they sent me to Arnold's. Oh, yeah yesterday so i have never been really and i've lived here for six years so i roll so they close at 2 45 okay in the afternoon i guess they're a lunch only yeah thing. yeah um i was totally unaware that it existed i was asking people like where are the staple joints in nashville go. They go, yeah and so and, they, and a couple people mentioned arnold so i was like all right i'm going i literally rolled in there at 2 30 like it was like right before they they close at 2 45 like on the dot right and um and it's like a cafeteria yeah right they have yeah. their thing set up it's you like, like you walk through, through. and you, yeah and so they they were pretty much out of most everything. Bummer. Um, I ended up getting roast beef, like mac and cheese and collard greens. And the probably the hot, the food was excellent. Mm-hmm. Like it's good ba- baked mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. It was definitely the leavings of the roast beef. <laughs> like it was like the end pieces, you know. You got to go it back was, in the beginning. Yeah, of the day. I got to go back like during service <laughs> and actually get like the legit version. But um, but it was really well seasoned and super delicious. But the highlight was actually the people. Mm. And um, the lady who was behind the counter, like when I walked up, you know, short hair lady, just kind of like, she was like, what are you having, honey, or whatever? <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, you know, what do you got? She's like, well, we got roast beef and like the grouper. And I was like, all right, well, ro- roast beef. Grouper, I don't know. Yeah, I was like, mm, maybe not the grouper. I was like, I'll do the roast beef. And um, she's like, you work in restaurants, don't you? And I was like, uh, yeah, how did you know? She's like, you seem very assertive. And she was like, and she's talking to me like a damn New Yorker yeah, or something. I was like, you're oh, assertive, I'll, man. Yeah, but she was super friendly. How funny. And she's like, I can't remember what her name was. Damn it, I wish I remembered. But she introduced herself, and we did, and then like all the other people from the line came over, and they're like, hey, I'm Zach, and I'm so, so. I was like, you guys are awesome. awesome. Yeah, you guys are great. And that's why they've been, what, a staple for so many years. Yeah, however the long. people. Yeah, so I would recommend go to okay. Arnold's. When if you you're have... back, let's go together yeah. at 2.30 p.m. Totally. We'll do an Instagram story. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll like do like the I'm whole thing about I'm it. I'm in. Cool. So those are my spots. How about you? Okay. Um, Don't say my places. Well, I loved, obviously, <laughs> Church and Union yeah. in Nashville. Plus, <laughs> um, we live in East Nashville, and... Our, like, go-to if we have a date night is always Folk. Okay. Uh, same chef as Rolf and Daughters. Okay. And we just sit at the bar and order, like, everything, truly everything on the menu. Why is it your go-to? <sighs> Service. Like, I always know the bartenders are going to, like, pour me some cool, funky wine and tell me what to, to order. But the food is so good. Like, he does a bunch of veg dishes that you can share to start and then always has some larger mains but the pizza is like out of this world Uh-oh. you've never been i've never been okay oh well, then i'll take you there. so i haven't been actually out of it, and that's why it's so hard to, for me to decide because like when i'm in town you're working i'm working and i'm running around yeah. and i'm and so i don't get a whole lot of time yeah. to go so, i'm gonna try to make more time now that we're open yeah and like i've got awesome staff mm-hmm. now like my chef here is amazing he's doing a killer job yeah he is you know we're working on ophelia's so like i'll be busy with that but I don't have to be in the kitchen like grinding yeah. out. Yeah, and so I'm going to make some time. Make to an it. effort. Yeah, I it will, is for sure. Like I so buy folk. the merch. Like I'm like a total nerd. <laughs> like I have like okay. a hat and a bag. Full disclosure. I've do never you repre- done that. Do you represent them? No, I don't. Okay. They're not my client. Okay. They're, those are one of them like, damn, yeah, like, I wish they I don't could. even need PR, yeah. right? It's just yeah. like so good and it's so classic and unassuming and like great service. It's just... It's like not too fancy, but you could also, we actually got engaged outside of there, like Aww. in the alley, because nice. I would have killed Zach if he did it in the restaurant. I yeah, would have yeah. not said yes. <laughs> um, but it's just like, yeah, you can go with family or just go by yourself. I don't know. There's just something about it. But What's your favorite thing on the menu there? Like the... Is there something? Is there something that you go for, like a signature thing, or is it just? I oh, like no matter what, we always get the sausage pizza that they have. Okay. Like every time, and then the sardines. 
So interesting. Which I've never had never really ordered before on a menu, but like that's a must. Yeah. Why? What about the sardines? I don't know. They're like salty and citrusy with like a lemon oil and. That's interesting. I'm obsessed. Yeah, that's interesting because sardines are usually like they're a hate or yeah. love hate thing. Yeah, right. People either they grew got up me on to them. love them, oh, and I've awesome. never grown up eating them. They got to be good then. They're good. Yeah. I don't know. That's cool. All. What else? Yeah. What else you got? What other spots? So that's your neighborhood joint. It's your go-to that's spot. That's my go-to. Um, Audrey's pretty fun. Is it? Like, is it a big restaurant or small? It's, it's small. Like a, There's yeah. only like six bar, eight bar seats. It's, I mean, well, it's a decent size. I'd say okay. they fit like a hundred people. Okay. Yeah, so um, we did Audrey recently, which was a really fun experience. Was it was really great. So I really, lo- I should have said this too. I love what Sean's doing at yeah. the Continental yeah. oh, because yeah. that food speaks to me. Yeah. Like, Raw I t- meat on a plate. Yeah. It, well, and it's all like, it's hyper classical. <laughs> yeah, like it he is. is. He is doing legit classic French food. Totally. And he's, and he's folding in some of his like Southern, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, kind of expertise mm-hmm, in there mm-hmm. but it's but it's straight up traditional mm-hmm. french cooking and that's what i came up yeah in. that's how you and he's trained. doing it so well like i took my team i love that yeah i took my team there and we were i mean i was fucking blown away yeah like, this is so good i sort this is kind of like bougie but um i was invited as a guest um but by the eater editor and she had been invited to do their martini and caviar pairing at mm-hmm. the bar so cool yeah. Very bougie, but like very fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Audrey was really cool. It was like everything was just so thoughtful and beautiful. A lot of tasting experiences to me can just feel like they're trying too hard and miss the mark a little bit for me or I leave hungry <laughs> um, and like go to Taco Bell on the way home. <laughs> I've, I've I did the, not I've do had that those, here. Yeah, I've so. had those, and I have a serious issue with that when you spend... A couple a lot hundred of bucks, money. Yeah, and you're a like, lot of money. and now I got to get some money. Now I need a yeah. Taco Supreme, yeah. Yeah. you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we had a really, really fun night. I actually but that was showed... not the case. No, it was not the, the case at Audrey. I actually am an idiot, and I don't know how I did this, and I'm like so type A about my calendar, but we showed up on the wrong night for our reservation. That's awesome. Um, I which it. I've never <laughs> in my life done. And I'm like, yeah. damn, I'm a mom now. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a hard reservation to get. It's hard. Yeah. I like waited online to get it. I was so excited. And they were so nice. They like clearly also being kind goes a long way. I wasn't mm-hmm. like an asshole. It was clearly my fault, not the restaurant's fault. Right. And like you didn't being, accuse them of no, like No, I'm not like, damn you. Yeah. Like, no, I fucked up my calendar. Yeah. Um and they were so sweet and still sat us and like made it work. And oh, uh just the way they handled it and like their service was was awesome. So we did like a fun wine pairing and yeah, they were great. Awesome. So Who'd you go with? My fiance. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. What yeah. was the best best thing you ate at Audrey? The Audrey's a little more representative, I, I think, I of Sean's food, right? Like what he's known for. Yeah, it's like definitely got it's like a, that, a southern, he, but like they're like his roots. Like yeah. I think it's Appalachian. Yeah. They call it. Yep, Appalachia. Um, yeah, that, that's a fancy mm-hmm. word. I, lo- I learned that because <laughs> I, I interviewed a chef. Oh. Uh, from North Carolina, who oh, is sick. like deep into the. Appalachian, Appalachian, whatever <laughs> cuisine. We'll, we'll get he, fixed. He corrected it. Me. We'll learn it later. Yeah, I said it like a northern. I was like Appalachia. He's like, nope, no, do not say that again. I was like, sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean everything. I can't even think of like uh, each individual item right now because it just was like the whole experience is what I recall. Yeah. So yeah, go check it out. Cool. I will for sure. Any dirt? Do you yeah. have any dirt? I don't have dirt. I don't Come speak on. dirt. You don't speak That's dirt. That's why I'm good at my job. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So let's talk about Nashville. So <laughs> Nashville's exploding. Yeah. I mean, that's what kind of drew us here. Totally. Um, you know, we were, we, we had been looking, Nashville was interesting to us because it's still in our little, our triangle. Region, right? It's yeah. like, you know, we're in a different time zone, but it's still got a Southern sensibility about yeah. it, which, which we really like. It's a medium, large city. Mm -hmm. It's not huge. It doesn't have the issues of like a Chicago, a New York, these, you know, those kind of social issues that you deal with yet. Mm -hmm. It's growing. Yeah. But I remember, you know, around the time, so we're celebrating our year anniversary. One year. Yeah. So Thursday, September 15th. (laughs) Thank you for plugging. I can never remember the date. Well, this will come out after, but we have a big party. (laughs) Yeah. It's a big party. It's going to be fun. It it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I can guarantee you it was fun. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but I remember like when we opened, 
um, coming into the city, you know, every couple of weeks to, to work on the, the project and get open, the amount of cranes and oh construction and yeah. stuff going on. I mean, there's just like. And new restaurants. Yeah, there's thousands of them opening. It's it's crazy. I, I am excited. Like living here is really exciting and fun. I fear that a lot of people without like hospitality experience saw this as like an an easier secondary market Mm -hmm. and a lot of (laughs) unqualified people are opening cafes or restaurants and they don't necessarily know how to run them and i think Mm, here's the dirt you know (laughs) i'm not gonna name names but like i think that people underestimate the amount of work it takes and like blood and sweat and tears and Mm -hmm. I think they thought Nashville would be like easy because yeah. it's it's not New York and it's not Chicago and it's not SF like right. And I think we're gonna see a big shift in like the next two years of who stays still around and who doesn't. Mm. Um, and so that will be really interesting and and we'll see. It's like these trendy places are gonna lose. I, and and I don't hope this upon anyone. Like right. I I go to places that aren't my clients because I want every, I think there's enough for everyone to be successful. But I think that people came in like, uh, I don't know. I just, I just don't know if they'll be here in a few years. Yeah. Cheaper rent than the other big markets. And so we're just going to open it. Um, and I think what'll be interesting, we don't work with any of the like celebrity Broadway bars, Mm -hmm. but like, Again, coming back to like longevity of brands, Mm -hmm. like will those be relevant in five years? I'm just so curious. Like tourism Mm -hmm. has really driven a lot of Nashville. Your question is, will those like Florida Georgia line? Mm -hmm. I don't know them. I don't feel bad using them as an example. I'm sure they're great. people. Are they new? No, but they're not a band anymore. Uh They've broken up. Right. So now we have all these concepts that are like pegged to people. Uh Uh-huh. Which is really dangerous, I think, yeah. because mm-hmm. people change or people come and go. Yep. And so now that they've announced that Florida Georgia Line is no longer a band, what happens what to happens Florida to Georgia Line that they've mm-hmm. probably spent millions and millions of dollars building? I don't That's know. A good question. That might be a really good opportunity for someone else to come in, mm-hmm. but that might be a really tough thing for them. Well, I'm not and that, sure. And that, and that is what may end up happening with some of these restaurants and yep. stuff too, is like, you know, people will open these trendy things that last a year or two yep. and they're like, oh, wait. And then there's second done. generation spaces available yes. for more seasoned people to, yeah. to operate. More restaurateurs will come in and say, okay, the, re- the space is already built. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's something that we had done. I mean, yeah. that's, that w- that's partly how we were able to get started because mm-hmm. we are not uh, wealthy people. Yeah. Like yeah. me and my business partners <laughs> are not. We're just regular folks with regular <laughs> issues and regular money. Um, and so we had to find secondhand spaces yeah. that were defunct. And like, you know, I mean, Five Church, when we, when we started that brand, now Church and Union in Charlotte, yeah. was like three times closed bars that couldn't stay open oh, i mean wow. it was like a bum depot right like oh, that's so it, interesting yeah it's like literally like literally when we went to go look at the space yeah. i think pat alejandro saw the space uh-huh. and was like hey pat jamie you guys gotta come, come. to this spot this is a good spot uptown we were actually looking in noda which is like a funky kind of okay. east nashville cool. type neighborhood and alejandro dragged us up there we went to look at it and there were literally bums using the stoop as a bathroom <laughs> and i was like yeah, this looks great. I was like, oh, I don't know. what are you talking about, man? He's like, no, no, we can turn it around. We'll do our thing. We'll make it amazing. And I was Is like, that your Ollie voice? Yeah, that's, that's my Alejandro. <laughs> okay, it's cool. not even close. No. But pe- some people it's won't great. understand. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he was convinced that we, we could do something there. I wasn't seeing it at the time. But had it not... You know, people thought we were crazy for taking over that lease. They were like, oh. This is like the doom yeah, spot. That whole yeah, 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 of course. Thing, and yeah. we're like, okay, well, we'll show you. Yeah. Like through commitment, hard work, drive, like we will make it successful. Mm-hmm. Um, curious, and, like, just sorry to interrupt yeah, no, you, no, but like, no. I'm always curious on your end, like, how much value do you place on location? Because, mm. right, like, that a was lot. a space that you just were like, no, I yes. don't see the vision. Right. Yet you went move forward and have been doing fabulous. Yeah. Like obviously neighborhoods are important, but yep. like 
I'm just curious in your perspective, like that's obviously not your, like your food and your, you know, right. experience, but for you, like how much do you value location? I think it's critical. Yeah. I think it's critical because, you know, we now are in the habit of taking over spaces that are either we feel are going to be mm -hmm. in a prime mm -hmm. location or that need to be in a prime location. Yeah. Right. Like church and union here. Yeah. Um, and Nashville is on fourth between church and union. It's literally, it was a better business bureau, I think, or some something. Weird business. Like some crappy, not a cool restaurant, not a cool restaurant. Yeah. It was not a restaurant. Yeah. It was like some office space. Right. I think it was a better business bureau if I remember correctly. <laughs> well, that's good. It, but it's, it, but, um, they were the, the, all the spaces on the ground floor were available in this high rise and it's across from, you know, every hotel, the Bobby dream hotel noel um, noel like it's like this line mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me these line of boutique really cool brand hotels yeah. and there is no great food up there totally There's so that's a, what drew you to this this yeah, space yeah and we so we saw that and we're like this area needs to be popping yeah yeah and we are a brand that likes to be in a popping high energy volume yeah yeah Area. And some and would so like consider us. that dangerous because there's this weird stigma of like locals not going to downtown. Mm -hmm. But I think people go where the fun is and where yeah. the good food is. Totally. And so I, I've actually seen with you working with you guys, mm -hmm. of course, you're going to draw those you know, ho those hotel visitors. Right. Yeah. Because there's, there's no other options. People are coming to Church and Union. Yeah. And coming downtown yes. for you. We're getting a lot of celebrities too, which is great. Yeah. I love that. Not because I love celebrities. Yeah. Because like I... I love them like I love everybody yeah. else. But it means that the word is getting They've to heard them. About They've you. heard about it, right? Celebrities, I think, typically want to, like, they don't want to go eat somewhere that sucks. No. Right? Like, nobody really does. Yeah. And they've got people feeding them. Yeah, of course. Information. Of course. Right? Like, they, how did they hear about you? Right. So, well, like, Bobby Bones came in, and mm -hmm. he's definitely, like, a local celebrity here. Yep. And he posted, like, without any prompt by, <laughs> by me, yeah. which normally that would be us. Yeah. And just like how wonderful Church and Union yeah. was. And to us, that's such like a fuck yeah moment yeah. because we didn't it means coordinate it. It means that he saw it, he heard about it, and yeah. he took the time to, to come make a reservation out. and eat and then loved it so much right. beyond just having a good meal. Posted on his feed, I believe, mm -hmm. like, you know, in social world, like yeah. that's major. It's not yep. just a story. How much he, uh, you know, enjoyed Church and Union. Yeah, and that's like, huge. That is such a win. And yeah. like that celebrity I love as well. And yeah. It's not like the the other side of celebrity <laughs> that can <Yeah>. be tough. <laughs> yeah. It can be tough, yeah. right? It's like I want this table and, right. you know, now celebrity is such well, a weird and, word. Yeah, and the people that I'm talking Influencers, about. Influencers, celebrity. celebrity. We, we will take the, the hoity-toity yeah, wannabe course. scene celebrities as well. Great. Because people want to see them. Yeah, of course. And that's great Good for, for publicity or whatever. But what I really love to see is the celebrities that are in ball caps, sitting yes. at the bar yes. by themselves with a newspaper, Just enjoying having it. a meal. I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah. We got you. That's a win. Right? Yeah. Because we're not in the business of being like posting on, hey, look who's at our bar. No. Like, like no. whatever. We don't need to do that. Yeah. Um, but to me, that is validating, right? Is that they're coming here on their own accord. They're mm -hmm. not here to be seen. They're here to have a good meal. Yeah. And, this and is people spot. do see them and people tell their friends. Right. And like that word of mouth goes as a publicist, I never recommend that we like do a sighting or like right. this celebrity was here unless it's like a very nightclubby brand. Like I don't think that is wise. You want to be typically a space that like is safe for them to mm -hmm. frequent and you want to let other people do that job yeah. for you. I totally believe that. I mean, that's how we are in Charlotte. We yeah. get a lot. I, mean, I think that's where a lot of our kind of celebrity mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. knowledge came from because we get. Didn't tons. you have Beyonce? Uh, I don't know about oh, that. You'd have to Rihanna. ask Alejandro. What who Rihanna? Who was it? No, that was oh, a, that was, that a, was a, prank. April Fool's prank. That was a prank. Yes, and so so <laughs> okay, so, cut so, that out. Uh, no, 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 no. We won't cut it out. I'm going to tell it. Who did you do that to? I'm going to tell the story because it's beautiful. To Abby? Yeah. Oh, 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 Daphne. So, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw it. Okay. And thought that we all saw it. <laughs> now, here's the thing, Madison White. Beyonce, our, please come in. Yeah, our, please, Beyonce, we'd love to have you. I'll buy your but, dinner. But um, but but Madison White and the team got together. Were you in on that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Julie <laughs> Julie was in on that. So they they pranked our managers, 
saying, hey, we just got this call. Beyonce's coming. It's like super <laughs> VIP, like all this stuff, like at the last minute, right? Like she'll be here, here 20 now. minutes. We got to like get... <laughs> And the team flipped the fuck out because something like that would happen. Of course. Right? Like that could happen. In and like her restaurant. one day off probably too. <laughs> yeah, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. She's not there. Yeah, it's like, of course. She's like, fuck, I got to yeah. figure this all out. And the then queen. it turned out it was just a, it was a prank. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Well, you got me. Yeah, I yeah. think I did know that, but I actually just in my mind was like, yeah, she went there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe but, now she will. But we do, but we do get a ton of celebrities, like a lot of um, sports yeah. celebrities and yeah. stuff like that. And, and they, and they want to enjoy it but they don't want like some michael jordan will come in in charlotte and he'll sit in the middle of the bar mm, right with mm -hmm. his like team and yeah. stuff and and he he doesn't mind um being noticed yeah you know i don't think he probably likes to be accosted and people are like, right but but i think he likes to be seen other celebrities will like sit upstairs mm -hmm. in, a, in a in a random spot and we're totally cool about like keeping people away. yeah like i'm like yeah. don't bother them like they're here for your experience too, yeah of course and they're entitled to that yeah right um, I think that's important. Yeah, I do too. It's just so, like a safe place for anybody yeah. to come enjoy. So go downtown in Nashville. It's the hot spot. Yeah. Right? Celebrity We're, sightings. It's, it's blowing. It's blowing up. <laughs> or me having yeah. one too many ghost yeah. cocktails. Yeah, if you see the long haired blonde <laughs> kind talking, of to, her, over. Ta talking no. to her her story at the end of the bar, three deep in martinis. Oh my gosh, that's, that's me. Hannah. <laughs> what other areas? Let's talk about area. Do you feel like how, what do you what do you sense is going on in in, in Nashville? In Nashville, yeah. like from neighborhoods, like a, from a restaurant hospitality. I mean, I I don't think this will like be disruptive, but I think Wedgwood Houston is like East had its moment. Um, I think like everyone is coming to Wedgwood Houston. Like uh, uh, Keith McNally is opening there. Soho Sweet. House just what's opened. He, what's he opening? He's doing um, pasties. Oh. Fuck. Yeah. Sweet. So that will be cool. And like quite a game changer for Nashville. Uh-huh. That's especially especially if they do it as well as they did it in New York. Yeah. Because Which that will be interesting, right? Yeah. Like there's something about these larger markets and I moved from New York of they weren't trying to be Instagram y and trendy. Mm -hmm. It just has this like special, unique vibe that mm -hmm. was created on its own. And I think Yep replicating that is very hard in a different market. Yes, it is like, so I hope I, I, I'm really excited. Um, but a lot of really great restaurants and like cool concepts are opening up over there. It's where Bastion is cool, which I have not been to yet. Oh, I need yeah. to go really good. Yeah. Um, they have like the bar area with like their epic nachos and then they have the tasting experience in the back. So both are worth doing. I did both in one night. <laughs> Do you Thank recommend you. Or nachos <laughs> for dessert? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was actually super fun. But yeah, I think that's a neighborhood. It's um, tough. I think it needs to be like a very destination driven. There's not as much volume of like people living there yet mm -hmm. it is coming it's coming it's they're, coming they're putting some you have to be able to survive like the first two to three years and yeah. then i think it'll be well worth it yeah. um but there's some great developers doing some really cool projects out there that i think will be exciting there's a lot of apartments and residential coming downtown everywhere like it's, I think when we first started crazy. looking at our spot, there was not like there was some. Mm -hmm. like, there's a couple. Mm -hmm. The Gulch obviously had yeah. its thing going like, yeah. going on over there, but um, there's a ton of. I don't was 505 built. I don't think it was done yet when we started. I think it has been there for a bit, but has it? they were like the one luxury yeah. building at the time. So there's a lot of yeah. hap like there's yeah. a lot of people like and you're in the heart of all of it. it. It's super exciting to see. It's like bringing downtown. I don't know. I feel like downtowns in general lost so much of like the fun mm -hmm. <laughs> over the last two years. Like obviously COVID killed them more yeah, than anywhere. Right. And I feel like Nashville specifically, at least the downtown is like getting that vibrant energy back and people are excited to go out and spend money and support businesses. And yeah. Nashville's unique in that our downtown is actually a lot of local businesses which i find very mm -hmm. rare mostly yep. downtowns are you know covered Chain with like corporate chain restaurants and we have a few but i think that's also something that is cool and yeah. unique here i didn't realize that until you said it but yeah. that is true There's like a, it's bobby mostly... hotel is local mm -hmm. noel local um dream hotel while it's 
managed by a, a you know larger company is all local owners actually oh that's cool so there's just a lot of that that yeah. i think like that community sense of downtown <laughs> we Whoa. are moving a lot enough dun, 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 dun. Yeah, like, the lights just went <laughs> off it's, it's probably because we're so still yeah yeah right. um but yeah so yeah our downtown in nashville is like hyper local and i think that's exciting to people yeah all right, so we're just over an hour. I'm going to let you go because I know cool. you're busy. No worries. But one last question I have yeah. for you. Is there a concept, a brand, a cuisine, a whatever mm -hmm. that you feel is missing that you would love to see here that you're like, God, when are you going to come here? Or I wish there was a better. Oh, is there something out there that you're like that you that you would wish so to see? So I grew up in San Diego, mm -hmm. like 15 minutes from Mexico. Okay. Ooh, I, I really like want like up. real Mexican food. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, the guys in the kitchens I worked with were like making us tacos and burritos every day. And yes, I cook tacos at home probably at least two or three times a week. Yes. We have Moss Tacos, which is really good on the east side, like very divey, cash only, like mm -hmm. great. But I really want like authentic Mexican, mm -hmm. like drive through dirty, yeah. greasy burritos. Gotcha. Not like Tex-Mex yeah. Mexican. No, I got you. I'm that's good. not like fancy or cool. I don't think to anyone but me. But like, that's uh. my dream. Like a drive through taco shop for your hangovers. <laughs> like, that's what you do in San Diego. You drive through, you get your burrito, you like spill your hot sauce in the car and you eat it on the way. We don't have that. Are you familiar with <laughs> Gorilla Tacos in I've heard LA? of it. Yeah, I've never been. All right. So I got introduced to that on, um, so... Top Chef All Stars. Yeah. When I was in LA, one of our challenges was to, uh, it was a Jonathan Goldman okay. episode, right? Okay. So he was the food writer there. Yeah. And, um, and it was like a tribute to him and all of his favorite spots. And so we, the chefs, had to go around to these different spots. And I was at Gorilla Taco. Mm -hmm. And he does. Oh, that was, you were like assigned. This. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we were kind of like, Got we were it. broken up into teams cool. as part of the challenge. We had to go like represent okay. like one of these cuisines or something like that. <laughs> I don't remember the details, but yeah. it was something like that. <laughs> And so Gorilla Taco was the one I went to. And the chef there, he's awesome. He um, he started with a taco cart. Mm -hmm. um, he he is, he's, I believe, he's a Mexican guy. He ended up going to work for Alain Ducasse. Okay. And like Alain Ducasse is like the, probably the greatest chef living in the world <laughs> in the universe probably wow yeah he's pretty amazing <laughs> that's a he's good got more michelin stars than anybody yeah. else yeah, yeah, he's yeah. all he's like you know he's and how did he he like stage for well, like I how think, did he get i there? think he was passionate about food i think he stage i don't know the details okay. but anybody's cool. look up everybody amazing. look up gorilla taco yeah. get the story yeah and um but it was fascinating so anyways he moves back to he's in this like hyper you know three michelin star yeah. environment Goes back to L.A., kind of where his roots are, and decides he's like, fuck that. Like, this is bullshit. Like, you know, fine dining is bullshit. <laughs> and starts a taco cart. <laughs> and he's do and he's applying all this, like, food theory yeah. to his tacos. Knowledge, right. And so now he's got a brick and mortar. I think he's mm, got a couple of okay. them around. On my and, list. Next yeah, time. yeah. When you're there, you got to check it out. I was just in L.A. too. But. but he does, like, really cool shit, right? So it's rooted his roots are Mexican. Yeah. And he's doing tacos. It's a taco shop. There's straight just up. No There's nothing food. else. But he's doing shit like like um Hamachi crudo mm, taco yeah. tostadas yeah. and stuff like like really inventive I cool love that. shit. Would that satisfy that? That could. That could, it could. Maybe. If there's like a little grit to it, as long as they had like a, if they had I mean, like I wouldn't a say no. Bean, like <laughs> yeah, exactly. thing going on. Exactly. Gotcha. Um cool. Uh, because I think you're right. The good Mexican food. So I noticed this yesterday. I, f I came into town. I'm hanging at the restaurant. We have a taco press in the kitchen. And I was like, whoa, what? are we doing? And, then, and, and the chef goes, oh, no, that's for family meal. We just make them. I was like, yeah, we just do. So we do all of our like. Call me. Yeah, I'll let you know. We're doing <laughs> I'll come for taco family night meal. for family meal. So we're, I told him, I was like, that's well, funny. I was like, why aren't we doing a tostado on the menu? Like, let's do one. Yes. And they're like, oh, I didn't think to do one. I was like, well, we should. We have the press. Let's do it. Let's do a dope one, right? Done. And then I'm so in it. I'll let you know when we oh, get that together. Like a Crunchwrap Supreme, but yeah. elevated. Yes. I will say Red Headed Stranger. Um, yep. 
Chef Brian over there does like a very fan, like not fancy, but like delicious crunch yeah. wrap. And okay. that is fire. All right, I think going. it's a special, but I did have to say my brother and sister-in-law are like huge. I guess they watched your season. Sweet. And they like totally geeked out when they knew we were working with you. So I'm just saying hi from them. They're big fans. Uh, who are they? Uh, Dan and Rochelle. Hey, Dan and Rochelle. <laughs> listen to the, this. They is were like, you. no way. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's so cool. Um, are they but, here? No, they're in SF. But All right. yeah. So well, and will you be on doing any TV or anything like oh. <laughs> cool coming up? I don't. Nothing on the table right okay. now. I'm, okay. I've actually I have some projects. Cool. I will talk to you about them. Awesome. Off, off, off the air. record. Yeah, I have some I have some like really interesting, cool projects that I've been cooking around for a while. Awesome. That I'm inspired to get started. Now, nice. That are cool. outside of outside of the restaurant, but still totally food and yeah. like related. Um, and just to kind of help s- yeah, keep things moving and yeah. keep it interesting and yeah. positive and fun and yeah. all that. So cool. Well thanks for having me. Thanks I just, for doing I it. Love it was y'all. a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs>